Hey guys, what is up? Dave here, back to you with another video on coding history with TechX, basically. This seems to be a uh, series that started because I have a lot of old software I've either created myself or um, just have lying around on my hard drive because I've collected software over the years. This is stuff that I've been, I've used for learning software creation, stuff I've done for um, this is stuff I've been, uh, basically just learning as we go, uh, because I want to see what I can learn from the stuff that I've created in the past on top of the fact of, I want to find out if, uh, if anything that I have in my coding history basically can be finished from what I started in the past. And I found this little project today uh, called 1320 Minor. And I don't even remember what this was. It was something to do with the 1320 project. I know that. And I don't know if this is going to be anything that's of use. And I wanted to go over it today and see if it's something that I should just delete or if I should keep it. So we're going to go over this real quick, see what it is. Once Visual Studio finishes loading, because Visual Studio kind of sucks. Let's see what this is. Oh, I remember what this is now. Okay. So, way back when the 1320 Challenge Project first started, there was an, opportun or there was an option to mine cryptocurrency with your web browser um, through, a, uh, through a thing called CoinMine. And I had to end up using like a Google Chrome browser thing right here to see if uh, we could actually make any profit off of doing cryptocurrency mining in the browser. So we're going to run it real quick. Yeah, I didn't think the web page existed anymore. Uh, what did it actually link to? It linked to this. So yeah, auth... Auth mine doesn't exist anymore, unfortunately. We lost out on all the cryptocurrency we mined with this thing. Um, it was a cool little program. This was a good way to learn how to put Google Chrome into Visual Studio. And it's not really of any use anymore because Auth mine doesn't exist anymore. So this is a project that we can delete and we can close out of. And this is kind of what the point of this series is, is me looking at old stuff that I have and can I delete it and save space? Because, you know, it's something useless. Uh, I can delete it later. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at other solutions and other projects that I have. And let's, I think we already did ADB controller on this uh, series. Nana Mouse was supposed to be a game. That's nothing fun. Birthday spammer. Let's go over birthday spammer. You guys... Some of you guys have been asking for this for a while, and of course, I'm getting an error with it. But it's still working, which is good. So if I go view code, you will see there is so much in here. There's uh, some form animation stuff. There's uh, some other options about how to use this. There's many things in here. This was a project that I did release public and gave to people to use. So long story short, you would put the phone number of a person who wanted to receive stuff right here. You would select what carrier they have, um, the email that the text message was coming from, and then the email you were sending with with the password for the email you were sending with. And then you would put your message here and there were, you could send up to a hundred every five minutes. Um, and then there were a bunch of exploits as well that I have built into this. So like, uh, th these are settings. These are some of the exploits like iOS 10 crasher. There's a porn spammer, um, a link crasher, iOS crasher, another one for an older version of iOS, um, subject pwn. There's pwn six, which was just randomization. There's another iOS message crasher. There's several ones that I could add to this even further to make it even better. But this was a cool little program, and I really liked it. And as you can see, it even had the timer set up so you could actually just be like, hey, send this quickly. And I probably over-engineered the code a little bit, but there is some like 
animation to the windows in here and you know what strings should be in what kind of uh, text box for checking them this is the randomization of the code so uh, if you wanted to send them random characters letters and numbers so it's just basically a pwn text so you're basically just being annoying at this point um, it would just create a random length of characters and send it that way um, and then this would check for like the iOS crashers and stuff like that so many cool options um, and as you can see there's all the SMTP options here they all worked uh, there's the mobile carrier options these did work I just took them out because there was no point in having them in here uh, for my private use but uh, as you can see, I even did, um, you could even spam pictures with this. And it was such a cool little program, and I loved it. So if this is something you want me to release public, let me know in the comments down below. I'll upload it somewhere, and I'll get it back to you guys. And if anybody wants to learn from this, go for it. It's nothing that's doing me any good on my computer. It was called Birthday Spammer because I created it. Um the night the day before a friend of mine's birthday and then set the timer to send the text messages at um 1201 on her birthday and that's when she got all the text messages it was pretty badass um i was actually pretty proud of getting this done and you know having something so annoying to send uh somebody you know happy birthday in the most annoying way possible and it was a lot of fun so let's look at one more and we're going to make this video kind of more like a uh multiple projects in this video because i have a lot of stuff so let's see let's go mm. Ooh, this could be really cool to look at so we're gonna duplicate this because I want to have a backup of it just in case so this is how um, trainers used to be made for Halo Combat Evolved and Custom Edition and how they would actually edit the process memory and stuff like that so here's the storage process the API um, the get process for modifying memory here's like the uh, get a key state and stuff like that there's a lot of very useful code in here and it's very well put together i did not create this i don't remember who did i don't think i even know who did actually but as you can see this will grab certain addresses from the uh running process of halo and it would basically try to inject its own options so this is deathless so this would be like basically god mode um no fall damage i don't even know how they would get some of these addresses but it's really cool and halo is a great way to learn if you're wanting to do any sort of uh reverse engineering halo is a great way to learn damage unto you what no idea what that means bump possession bump possession is really cool you basically take over their camera which is really cool. Infinite grenades, no fall damage. Medusa, you literally look at somebody and they die. It's the coolest freaking thing. One shot kill, that's really fun. Bottomless clip is unlimited ammo. And this is how it would actually install things or inject code into the process and stuff like that for doing wireframe and all that sort of stuff. There's a lot you can do with this that is hidden potential stuff at this point i kind of wonder what would happen if we ran this today on today's halo because there has been an update some of the stuff has been patched and these addresses need to be refound um and personally i'll admit i don't know how to do that i've never actually gotten that deep into doing it but there's a lot of really cool things you can do with this a uh, wall walker is probably just walking up and down walls which is really cool but this is a very cool program, and I'm sure it's very easy to find at this point. Um, let's see. Halo Dev 
Ah, there it is. It's on Halo Maps. Of course it is. I don't know how I got the source... Oh, no, this is a different one. I don't know how I got the source code to this. Or how long I've had it. But if you have any interest in this and you want to learn how to reverse engineer, use some tutorials for Cheat Engine. And then apply them to this. And you'll be set to go. You'll figure out everything you need to know. So let's look at... Actually, we'll do one more. But this is a very useful program as what well. No... This is a very useful uh, program as well. Wait, have I been doing remove this whole time and not noticing? Hold on, did I break stuff? Oh boy. Okay, we're going to do close solution like you're supposed to. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I swear. Let's do one more here. So the Halo one, that's really cool. Ah, here's something you guys have wanted from me for a while. This is my old uh, Minecraft control panel sort of thing. I don't know what I actually, what MCCPS stood for. Um... But this was a tool that I made a long time back that would auto walk, auto sprint, auto sneak, basic clicker for like being in fights and stuff like that. PVP, uh, anti AFK would basically walk you in random directions over a square of a certain size, but it would just change your direction at random. Um, MC spammer was basically a text spammer. Uh, sword swapper is an exploit that worked when they first added the new pvp method in 1.9 where if you had a sword in slot one and slot two you could switch back and forth between them and hit people faster than if you were uh doing um regular pvp speed and then item duplication this was an item dupe that actually did work where you would basically drop pick up drop and then crash and that's how it worked. It would just basically spam, drop, and pick up at the same time and move stuff around in your inventory so quickly that it would duplicate if the server was lagging. And the code is very good, very useful. Uh, you could get to Sinful Android, obviously, from this. There were a bunch of options on this, and I actually, I think all the actual code and stuff like that is in here. I know this thing worked. Where's all the actual, where's all the hacks actually coded in? Huh. The hacks actually aren't coded here. I wonder if they're in this one. This is a different one that I made. Works kind of the same way um, as a duplication glitch, uh, sword swap. This was auto crystal as well. This worked faster at the time than a lot of uh, hacked clients auto crystal. Um, but you had to have your hotbar set up in a certain way for it to work. But there was a movement timer, a spammer, walk and sneak feature. Uh, main delay click so you could actually control how fast your mouse would click and it would actually move your mouse in circles and stuff like that so basically like jitter clicking so you could actually get those hits a little bit quicker and then there was the hotkey thing here as well so actually I think I was trying to move it over into just this on that third option that third iteration and then clean up the code but I don't think I ever just got it done but these are some of the projects that I have there are hundreds more on my computer and if you want to see more, let me know. Also, let me know what ones you want released down in the down in the description. Uh, I'll try to get them out and figure out a way that I can host them and stuff like that. And I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.